President Trump also highlighting that North Korea is already on the path to denuclearization. Watch. Chairman Kim has told me that North Korea is already destroying a major missile engine testing site. That's not in your signed document. We agreed to that after the agreement was signed. That's a big thing for the missiles that they were testing. The site is going to be destroyed very soon. Let's talk more about that destroyed testing site here now. Joining the conversation is Paul Bonicelli. He is a former Bush 43 State Department official and Colonel Jay Voorhees, a former Army commander in Iraq and Afghanistan. Good to see you both, gentlemen. Thanks very much for joining us. Paul, what's your take on that? We just heard the president talk about this destruction of a uh, testing site. Uh, do you believe North Korea? No, uh, and we shouldn't believe them. We should believe that Kim Jong-un is afraid, he's concerned, he's doing everything he can to deal with a different kind of president than his father or grandfather ever had to deal with. Uh, and by saying this, I'm very optimistic and I'm very congratulatory toward the president for what he's done. But I think I'm just like the president and his advisors. Uh, there's a long way to go here. Kim Jong-un doesn't want to do any of the things that he's doing. Uh, he's trying to figure out how, exactly how far he has to go and how quickly he has to go. Uh, to get what he needs, which is to stay in power, uh, to protect his regime, uh, and to probably give himself some leverage against China. Because my guess is there are, there's tension between China and North Korea over this, because China doesn't want to see this thorn in our side go away. And Kim Jong-un is very aware of that. And, and, and Jay, the president said that the human rights issue was discussed with Kim Jong-un. The president needs to walk this balance of uh, being a friend in one in, in, in one sense to North Korea uh, to open a new chapter, but on the other, make sure to not ignore the human rights uh, issues and and the treatment uh, of of his people by Kim Jong Un. Yeah, I, I, t I totally agree, uh, and I agree with Paul's analysis as well. But have to back up. This is a hugely historic event that, that we've seen today, and just the fact that Kim Jong Un is coming to the table and, and offering um, to explore avenues to move forward is a good thing. But but we have to be very cautious because of exactly what you're talking about, Maria. There are so many other issues associated with North Korea, their history, their brutal regime, and, and we need to take careful consideration of them all. A great step forward, um, and, and I think that's undeniable on any front, whether you're left or right, and at least for a moment, I think, uh, as Americans, we need to come together and say that, you know, we're not going to war, we're looking at that diplomatic instrument of power and applying it the right way, but there's a long way to go, Maria. Paul, Paul, it's David McDowell. I want to point out that one of the first things that President Trump in his press conference talked about was Otto Warmbier, saying Otto Warmbier did not die in vain. He believes that was a pivotal moment. And it was one year ago today that Otto Warmbier was released by North Korea. So in terms of symbolism, what about the symbolism of that? I know that people on the right and the left, at least following the conversation on social media last night, even ardent supporters of President Trump were somewhat bothered by the appearance of the American flag standing right alongside the flag of North Korea. Well, I understand people's concern, but, you know, uh, the most important thing here, and, and Gordon Chang is with you, and I admire him so much. In fact, I listen to him before I start talking about these things. Uh, but I don't think the president loses any leverage by uh, a meeting with Kim Jong-un, the flags together, the photo ops, uh, because everyone knows he's a different president. There's no chance that he's going to cave. There's no chance that he's going to walk away with less than what he said he wanted. Uh, and he's got surrounding him these uh, folks like Pompeo and Bolton and Kelly and others, which are exactly opposite of the people who've been in charge at the second and third tiers under our previous presidents. Yeah. So Otto Warmbier, uh, our, the remains of our soldiers, all of these things are going to be dealt with in the right way. But the president knows until North Korea is not a nuclear threat to us, those things wouldn't change anyway. So he's got his cart uh, uh, behind the horse like it should be. Yeah, that's, that's an important point. C Colonel uh, Voorhees, let me ask you this, because a comment from the president during that news conference is raising some eyebrows this morning as he talked about the future of America's military presence in South Korea. Watch this. I want to get our soldiers out. I want to bring our soldiers back home. We have right now 32,000 soldiers in South Korea, and I'd like to be able to bring them back home, but that's not part of the equation right now. At some point, I hope it will be, but not right now. We will be stopping the war games. 
which will save us a tremendous amount of money unless and until we see that the future negotiation is not going along like it should. Stopping the war games, Colonel. Is this a good idea? Will our allies be on board with this? Gordon Chang just made the point that readiness is so critical. If we stop the war games, will we be ready in the event of a necessity to use it? Yeah, I, I think that uh, that was a little bit of a diplomatic uh, maneuver um, to show probably some good faith to continue things going. But there is in no way I can guarantee you, first off, troops uh, levels are not going to come down for a long, long time, in my opinion. There's too much on the table and, and a long road to go. And as far as readiness, um, you can define war games a bunch of different ways. I can guarantee you, uh, at least from my perspective, and having spent uh, a year uh, plus in Korea, the training will continue and we will make sure, commanders will make sure that they're able to accomplish um, any contingency that would come up. Um, I think you're going to see a little bit of, you know, a little gamesmanship back and forth, but we're not going anywhere for a long time and there will be continued training and readiness yet to be scope and scale. And yeah, go ahead. Uh, Paul, uh, this is Lindsay Bell. Just a quick question on, it seemed like this uh, summit really was heavy on the PR and light on the you know, concrete details about denuclearization in the North Korea Peninsula. Um, were you, how did you feel about how the summit went and what the outcome is going to be in the next steps going forward? Is this a win? Sure, I thought it went very, I thought it went very well for the president. And, and you're right, there, there's a, a bigger element of PR than substance. But uh, that's, first of all, that's a Trump style. Uh, that's part of what he does. That's how he gets to the success that he's after. But secondly, we have to remember the PR uh, that we just saw, the public relations, the congratulations that are due to him, came after all of the tough-minded military and sanctions-related actions that he took, as well as bombing Syria uh, in front of the Russians uh, and making them scurry away because the United States is going to bomb their allies. After he had uh, dessert with the Chinese president and said, by the way, I just bombed Syria. In other words, there's a long list of actions that he's taken. And I have to repeat, surrounded by aides that are just as tough, if not tougher than he is in terms of their rhetoric and their outlook. So it's well worth taking victory laps when you have performed as the president has done and his administration has done. All right. We, we, will, uh, we will keep watching this. And, of course, we are expecting another meeting. Paul Bonicelli, Colonel Jay Voorhees, thanks very much, gentlemen. Good to see you both. We appreciate thanks, your insights.